Who's the next one? And these two things kind of uh, in ways. David Reedon! I guess a really personal story about the way that I've been making video games and how I've been trying to figure out the balance between medicine and games and what the hell this device has to do with anything. So, uh, this is an EMS, electromyosimulator, Simulator, and it's been my research for the past year. And this device is really cool because it can control people uh, and involuntarily cause them to contract their muscles. Uh, it can also control their balance and it can also make them vomit. <laughs> I grew up, uh, I was born in Australia, but I grew up in Indonesia, in Jakarta, and uh, my family were very supportive of me. I was really interested in a whole bunch of different stuff, um, but I did kind of really crappy in high school. They almost expelled me twice because I was not interested in pedagogy, and I was against a mandatory child conscription, also known as school. Uh, and and th this didn't really sit well with the system, but the system can kill itself. So it's awful. The system is really bad because uh, it, it caters to the majority, it caters to that like middle uh, sigma two, right? And this is a problem because we don't fall in that. And we don't fall in that in any kind of way or form. Or shape. We are the outliers. We're the ones that are making interesting things that are making different things. Uh, and here is the effect, by the way. Sorry, I'm just going back and forth. Oh, this, if I press the button here, my hand contracts like that, and it causes excruciating amount of pain at the higher levels. Um, and if I continue holding it, I've done a setting which will continue to add electricity until I can't hold it anymore, or my muscle gets ripped apart, which is kind of interesting in its own right. I'm going to give this to you. You have to hold down one, okay? Uh, that's fine, thank you. So next bit is, what did I do in Indonesia? Well, in Indonesia, uh, my house got bombed um, by terrorists. And as a result, I moved to America, and uh, then I moved to Australia and did medicine. And this was a bit of a really difficult choice because I wanted to do games all my life and I wanted to create video games and have it expressive. So these two actually have a really big interplay. The intersection between medicine and games is much larger than we expect. We look into like physiotherapeutic games, we look into games that uh, are actually beneficial for psychotherapy. And one of the problems that I'd like to pose to you is what is my next choice? Do I continue medicine? and try to do something more effective, directly saving people or helping people? Or do I continue games? Something that I think I'm a bit better at, something I'm maybe a bit more passionate about. Um, but doesn't that such a direct consequence? Or maybe it does. Maybe we can argue that art and civilization and culture are more important in the long term. And these are the questions I want to pose to you while shocking myself, right? So that's the question. Can somebody give me the answer? If the answer's right, I live. If the answer's wrong, you kill me. Ready? Yeah. Go! What should I do? Medicine or games? Games! 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 Oh good, that was right. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Because someone else can be passionate about medicine, but you're passionate about games. Yeah, okay, yeah. But like, you can very easily just destroy school with it forever. Right, but like... Very easily. Basically I'm trying to ask, why do we make what we make? Why is this at all important? <laughs> Why does this matter? Anyone can transplant a heart if you have the exact same steps every time, but only you can make the games that you make. But what about the empathy you needed as a doctor and the direct lives that you touch and have to actually have the, the communication to, to help you people's lives? That's one to one, but when you make one game, you can do that for thousands of people. Fair enough. What happens if I go into the hospital and change the hospital system and fix America? <laughs> Never will happen. Doesn't it improve the human does it? Not really. Does, do, do games improve the human condition? Yeah. Why? Like, they, like, can help like, induce, like, feelings of, like, empathy in people. Feelings of empathy in people. Well, like, yeah, improve empathy. Good. So, like, yeah, basically the biggest question I want to ask you is to why do you make games and why does this matter? And if you had the chance to do medicine, if you had the chance to be a doctor and directly go to people and say, I'm going to directly save your life, um, at the cost of not making games, is that selfish to say no? Why isn't it? Why do we love what we do so much to the extent of cutting out all these other possibilities in life? And why aren't you know we more interested, I guess, in also the intersection between health and games? But games are culture, and culture is humanity, and so making games is taking care of. Well, I'd also say that what's wrong with a certain amount of selfishness? We all have to be selfish to a certain extent, otherwise we won't be happy. You have to be able to find what makes you happy and what brings out your passion yeah. and pursue that in your life. Right, right. I think you're going to the making games is fun, playing games is fun, <laughs> meeting people who make games is fun. This is why I'm making games. I'm worried that this actually leads to shallow and callow work. And one of the things in Australia in particular that's a problem is a monoculture. It's kind of like there's a normative game design and people are always sticking to that. They're taught through the universities and brought up to believe in one particular studio culture or that there's one mode of expression. 
And one of the things that I really like about GDC is that we can have this. We can have this pluralism and paradigm of, of all these different people coming at it from different angles. And then from that, grow as people and mature so that we can create more considered work. Work that we understand matters. Work that can actually be part of a looted canon or something that can change the world. And I, as close as I am to like say, oh, Jane McGonagall fixes society. Um, you know, we, we can do it. And that's our responsibility. It's almost like there's an onus on us, I think, to make better games, to consider why we make games and what the alternatives are, and then say, if we're not going to do those things, let's make games the best way we can. Let's make the best games we can. Thank you very much.